the game to see the boxing boys. Welcome back, gang, for the first time and hopefully many more to come. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and click on the notifications right here, this little bell, so you can get those emails every time we go live. Boxingboys.com. I'm here with Anthony Juice. How you feeling today, champ? I'm feeling good, man. You know, just walked in the gym, so I'm ready to get my day started. Okay. Well, obviously, you know, we just had the big fight, you know. Um, Anthony Joshua, Joseph Parker. And, um, well, you called it. You called it. I mean, you said, you know, it went exactly how you said it would go. Um, what did you think about the fight? I mean, me personally, uh, I'm just like everybody else. I want to see knockouts from heavyweights. So I, I kind of thought it was a boring fight. You know, I'm, like I said, I'm a big Anthony Joshua fan. So I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, he looked great. Like, I, I kind of thought it was a boring fight. But he did what I thought he was going to do. You know, Parker didn't want to. He was, he was, I'm not going to say he wasn't trying to win. But from what it looked like to me, he was just trying to survive. He was cool with not getting knocked out. He boxed on the back foot the whole time. And Joshua was just, I mean, dictated with the jab. He didn't come in there. Uh, he didn't like try to go for the knockout coming in with clubbing with right hands and all that because you know like I said in the heavyweight division all it takes is one punch anybody's chin in the heavyweight division so he didn't want to just come in there reckless throwing straight right hands and get clipped with a hook and Parker's boxing skill was good man like he got a real good boxing skill so he was able to not me keep Joshua off him with the jab so you know Joshua was content and I mean they said he couldn't go 12 rounds he made 12 rounds look easy I mean um Based on Joshua's performance, uh, do you think that Wilder may see it the way you just saw you know, his camp? Or do you think they're looking at it as, man, I can easily get this guy out of here? I mean, I know, I know, if I know Wilder, he's a very overconfident guy. I mean, I don't know him personally, but judging by the way he acts, I mean, on, on the boxing scene, like he's a very confident guy. So he probably looking at it like, man, I would knock him out. But like I said, man, styles make fights, and Parker is going to present problems to a lot of people, and he's going to make anybody look like they're not how they're supposed to look or what we're used to seeing. So you know, it's easy for somebody to be like, oh yeah, because I had a couple people call me, oh, wow, they'll beat Joshua easy, judging by what I just saw. Styles, like I said, styles make fights, and Parker wasn't putting himself in danger. He was on point with everything. Like, even when Joshua tried to land them uppercuts, like, I'm like, if he land one of them, they're going to take his head off. But he was uh, ahead of the game. Like, he knew Joshua was trying to land that shot. So every time, he just moved over and got out of the way. Like, he, he was he's a very skilled fighter for a heavyweight. And then he was, like I said, he was a little undersized for Joshua. I don't think he realized how big he was until he got in the ring with him. Like, oh, this is a big dude. Like, I mean, like, I can't get in danger, put myself in harm's way. So, you know, but like I said, styles make fights, so I don't want people to look at it and be like, oh, wow, that beat him easy, because I don't think that's the case. Like, if he go in there thinking he's just going to knock Joshua out, I think he got another thing coming. But like I said, man, I can't wait to that fight for that fight to happen. And you heard Joshua say, man, we, we wanted, they wanted on that side of the pond. So why I come to America, like, I'm, a, I'm an American, so what, but I see what he's saying. Why I come to America? When I'm selling out Wembley Stadium, soccer stadiums, 80,000 people, and Wilder's fighting in at the Barclays Center, he's not even selling the Barclays Center out. I think the Brooklyn Nets stink, and they get more fans than them. Mm. So you think it'd make more sense, definitely, to have it over there? Definitely, the and then, like I said, like if if he's as confident as he says he is, and he knows that he's gonna knock him out, why not go over there? We saw Errol Spence do it, mm. and I was very critical of Errol Spence leading up to that point, like. Man, he's good, but you know, he's beating everybody in front of him. And he said, look, I'm going over there. I don't care where the fight is at. I'm going to go to the UK in his backyard and beat him. He went out there and he dogged him. And you know I mean, I'm a firm believer in how Earl Spence went about that situation. If you know you're going to beat him and you, you know what I mean, you confident in yourself, why not go over there? Get, get paid and get them bouts. Well, what do you say to the people who might say, well, Errol Spence wasn't a champion, so he had to go chase Kell Brook over there, whereas though Deontay Wilder is the WBC champ, you know, which is a very, you know, probably people people consider that as the most prestigious belt to hold. He might be thinking, what do you say to the people who say, well, why should a champion have to go over there and fight him? He has a belt. He's not Errol Spence chasing his first belt. I mean, he's not, but, you know, Joshua has... IBO, WBA, IBF, now the WBO, 21 fights, two-time unified world champion, 
and we see he like we see the the attention that he gets over there. Like it's just it for me. Unless they paying him buku money to come to the U.S. and fight and putting him in Dallas Stadium or one of these football, the big house, some some place that can hold him. Vegas is too small. Any any but any other basketball arena is too small for that man. Like he's the biggest star in boxing right now. And like I said, like regardless of Errol Spence had a belt, like he was confident. He knew. He was caught like other than Kelbo, he was calling dudes out, Keith Thurman, like calling them out at 15 fights. And he but he believed in himself. Like I am not gonna say cause he had no choice. He could have went another route and didn't go after the IBF. You know, but he believed in himself and he went over there and got it done. So if that's the case with Deontay Wilder, I feel like go over there because we all, like Floyd said, we all know who's the who the who the A side is in this fight. Mm. And that's Joshua. Well, a lot of people have said that uh, one of the things that make uh, Anthony Joshua so exciting is that there's a certain level of vulnerability uh, with Anthony Joshua. And we saw in the Ortiz fight that Wilder is vulnerable himself. Who's more vulnerable, Joshua or Wilder? And take the and, and take the competition into consideration when you speak about the Klitschko and Ortiz matchups. Uh, I mean, both of them are world-class fighters. They both around the same age. I mean, Klitschko, I believe, is older, but he's a lot bigger than Ortiz was. But, I mean, like, they both, like, the heavyweight division, anybody's vulnerable in my eyes. Like, anybody is vulnerable. I, if I had to pick a pick, I would say Joshua may be more vulnerable because, like I said, Deontay Wilder doesn't really put himself in harm's way and... Joshua is more successful with the counters, but he showed in his last fight that he he know how to box and he's not gonna put himself in harm's way. So I mean, it's, it's tough to say, but the heavyweight division, anybody's vulnerable. All it takes is one point to change the whole fight, and we saw that with Ortiz in the Wilder fight. Like you know, Wilder was people. A lot of people were saying he was losing on the scorecards, and boom, just like that, he knocked Ortiz down, and you now I mean, changed the whole fight. And then Ortiz rocked him. And then Wilder came back and stopped him. So, you know, like anybody's going to go in the heavyweight division. And like Joshua, he was <laughs> shot and he dropped Klitschko, threw his hands up like the fight was over. And th two rounds later, but even that round, Klitschko came back and was whooping his whooping his behind in that round. And Wilder had, I mean, while Joshua had to suck it up and get, get his second win, he came back. So it's hard to say who's more vulnerable. If I had to pick, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to be biased. I would say Joshua, but... I mean, it, we'll, we'll see, but I'm still picking Joshua in the fight. Okay. Um, does the fight happen now, or do you think that uh, Eddie Hearn uh, will go another route? You know, I mean, because you know, Big Baby Miller is in the mix now. Do you think that? Do you think that that uh, Joshua should take another fight before this Wilder fight, or do you even think the fight is going to happen based on the fact that many believe that if Joshua loses, where does he go from there? And if and if, and if Wilder loses, where does he go from there? And many say that the fight should be built up a little bit more because it's probably the cash-out fight. I mean, definitely the cash-out fight, but I feel like they're on a collision course. The fight is bound to happen. You heard what Wilder said. He says he wants Joshua. He heard what Joshua said. He wants, he wants Wilder. So I feel like the fight makes sense now. I mean, it can, you can risk couple more fights but I don't see nobody beating neither one of them until they fight each other and then I mean we're gonna see who's gonna lose like I like Big Baby Miller but I don't see him beating Wilder or Joshua I don't see nobody beating neither one of them but each other so until they fight we're just gonna have to see and hey I think I don't think they're gonna take another round I mean he can but like Joshua said if it makes sense and the money's right, why not? You know what I mean? And like you said, unless they come in with a crazy offer to bring you to the U.S., why not stay in the U.K. and get that money? And me personally, I think Wilder would make a lot more money going over to the U.K. So, you know what I mean? I think it makes sense for both sides to make the fight happen now. If we wait, you know what I mean? They just have boxing fans uh, drooling at the mouth waiting for the fight because I don't see nobody beating either one of them. Well, we saw Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather on a collision course that took five years for them to crash. Could we be looking at something similar here? Nah, I don't think so. They, you know what I mean? Like, they run like, the welterweight division was stacked, so they can always, like, Floyd can go another route, Pacquiao can go another route, and it took, you know what I mean, Bob Arum and Floyd to finally 
hash it out and get 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 the fight done. But it ain't too many it ain't too many heavyweights right now other than Joshua Wilder. Like I said, there's a few on the outside, but just a few, not as many as it is welterweights. And I don't see them being able to take with five years, maybe I can see a, another year, 2019 at the worst, but yeah, I feel like the fight's gonna happen either late 2018 or early 2019. Okay. All right, well, Anthony Juice Young, what's next for you? Uh, April 21st in Paramus, uh, New Jersey. That's up there. I think that's past like New York. It's kind of far. Okay. How much do you know about your opponent? Uh, I seen him fight Ray Sarando, uh, Amber Halili. I fought his brother, Skinder Halili. That was my last loss in, I want to say, 2016 at Boardwalk Hall. So, you know, I feel like it's a little get back. I'm going to get a little get back. I'm not fighting his brother, so I can't get all the get back. But, you know, I feel like I'm going to take it out on his, little, his older brother, you know what I mean, for, for being me. The younger brother for being me. Is there anything similar with them as far as styles? Nah, me personally, they come two completely different fighters. Skender okay. was a sledgehammer puncher, and the brother's more of a boxer. And like I said, he can box. I seen him fight Ray Serrano. I thought... He was winning the fight until, you know, he started getting the points deducted for the mouthpiece. I don't know what that was all about. You know, and at a professional level, you're supposed to have a custom-made mouthpiece, so your mouthpiece should just be flying out, out your mouth like that. So, I don't know. But he's, a, he's, he's definitely a skilled fighter, a lot different from his brother. His brother's more of a, like I said, a, a banger, a big puncher, has, I think, I want to say all his wins are by knockout except for like two. Mm. And uh, the brother has only four knockouts out of his 11 fights. But, I mean, me personally, like, it's give or take with either one. One's a puncher, one's a boxer. But I think the, uh, the the one that I'm fighting now is a better fighter completely because he know how to box. And, you know, like I said, it's boxer. One punch changes anything. Even if he can't, he's not known to be a puncher. All it takes is well, the right punch to the chin. Absolutely. Um, who are you working with to get ready for this fight? Uh... Everybody in my in my stable, Stevie, Steven Ortiz, uh, Anthony Bergen. I haven't sparred Ted yet, but Ted's a southpaw, so I probably won't spar him. But Tevin Farmer, right? Tevin, yeah, okay. Tevin Farmer. But you know, work is work. Rather be a southpaw, right? And it's a it's a, it's a body in front of you. you Not know I mean throwing punches back at you. So you know, work is work. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, you like to let people know where they can find you at on social media. Find me on Instagram at juice underscore money underscore LS4 and Facebook Juice Young. Okay. Um, thanks for clicking on. It's the Boxing Boys, the Jay Goodman. What is up, TBV family? Yes, yes, YouTube has been cutting funding to uh, their channels as of late and with net neutrality uh, going through its process. The internet is changing. If you want to keep your favorite channel intact, coming up with tons of content and plus, Get hours and hours of extra content. Head over to patreon.com forward slash the boxing voice uh, to become a member of the TBV family and help support the channel. Peace.